like to keep things uh, simple and sweet. Sometimes I might flap my lips a little too much, which I'm certainly at fault for. But let's take a quick journey down the road of exposure. And your camera has about, you know, five and a half to six and a half, uh, hair more, hair less, stops the dynamic range. What is the importance of metering? The importance of metering is that 70%, depending on the composition, what it is you're shooting, 70 to 75%, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little bit less, of your detail in the shot that you're taking exists up in the first three stops, the brightest three stops of your lighting. Let's take a look at a card right here that I have up front. Right now I have a zone 5 right here. Right now it's upside down. You can see it's zone 5, zone 7, uh, 6, 7, and zone 10. Pure white, pure black, zone 2. Zone 5 right here, which is 18% gray or middle reflectance. What this means is that regardless, you know, unless you want to make a shot dark, you know, it's a compositional choice. You know, this is not photography. One of the truest statements ever been made, I don't know who said it first, there's a lot of people who thought they said it first, is that photography is half art and half science. Um, a lot of the art stuff can't be taught, obviously so. Uh, most of the science stuff can be taught if you have a mind to be able to comprehend it. It's not that difficult. Your camera is a reflectance meter. Every DSLR out there has a reflectance meter. No different than the extremely accurate spot meter on this, uh, you know, top of the line uh, Siconic light meter. This is the spot meter in back. I actually look through it like a monocular. I'll actually take a reading with reflectance on and it'll give me a reading of what that exposure is set to be relative to 18% reflectance, i.e. zone 5. Right here, zone 5, which is this shading. Let's say, for example, my composition is set so that I want correct exposure and I have all sorts of details, little shadow nooks in this piece of driftwood. What do you think this is? This is the one advantage that colorblind people actually have. What do you think this is if it were in grayscale? It's about a zone seven and a half, uh, right underneath eight. So let's say it's a zone seven. If I use my camera's uh, in-camera reflectance meter and I stick it on spot meter, right now it's 1600 ISO, spot meter, Let's say I'm right about 500, 640, depending exactly where I meter it on this uh, piece of a driftwood. Take the shot, 500, 28, ISO 1600, turns out too dark. Okay, your camera wants to turn everything into zone 5 because this is a zone 7, 7.5. It wants to lower, here's the old example in a metering back from photography school where you have these extreme examples of difficulty when it comes to exposure like um, you know a, a polar bear in a snowstorm you know how do you properly expose for that or <laughs> the other one is is a, a black cat in a coal mine you know how do you properly expose for that to get the details so you don't pay attention you're not a slave to your camera what is it that I need to expose for well, you can take general rules of thumb say out in a snowstorm you know, you can meter anywhere if it's, you know, someone standing out in a snowy field and open up uh, two and a half stops so you don't blow your highlights and yet retain the uh, details and your subject matter and also your shadows, depending on the dynamic range of whatever camera it is that you're using. But your white camera, I mean the white snow, your camera wants to, with its inboard reflectance meter, whether it's matrix metering or spot metering, wants to turn all of that into this. And so if you stick, you take a picture of your kid out in the snow, you take a matrix a meter shot or a spot meter shot, this is exactly what your camera will decide to turn that white snow and your child into. It will go off the snow, depending on whether you spot meter, matrix meter, even center weight meter, and how good the meter is in your camera so far as, uh, like the center weight of metering could be like 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, or 6 millimeter, or what is actually measured, but let's just say mostly snowy scene. It's going to turn everything into this. Your camera wants to turn everything into gray sludge or 18% reflectance. Now here's a trick question. Now I've already said before many times that 95% of people don't need a light meter. It's also true that 100% of people can benefit from the use of a light meter. And it does not have to be, you know, a $650 super expensive light meter like this. This is an instant light meter. I'm able to adjust this uh, for, uh, 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 for uh, all incidents or actually drop it for uh, direct incidence readings by dropping the, dome, dro dropping the dome down. And I have a 1% 
spot meter, which is the one thing I lusted after most. They're mostly Minolta spot meters. They look like a gun, basically. You actually look through here, and it actually gives you a reading through the monocular. I actually dial it over here to uh, reflectance, and I take a one degree spot meter reading. Okay, at ISO 1600, I got 250 per second at f2.8. That is metering the incidence falling on this gray card. So now here's a trick question, and it's not really a trick question. It's kind of like, like who's buried in Grant's tomb. What is the difference? Now, obviously, if I can take a reading off the uh, incident, I've got nice diffuse light here, so I don't have any harsh lighting situations. Well, not, let's not complicate anything uh, to begin with. What's the difference between this, one two hundred fiftieth of a second at 2A, then I drop it and I take a spot meter reading. I'm averaging like 640, 800th of a second because this is a zone 7, 7.5. Now I'm taking a spot meter reading off the wood. There's no difference between the spot meter and this light meter than the spot meter on the camera, except it's a lot finer since it's a 1 degree spot meter. On this, depending on the camera, like uh, 3, 4, 5 degrees, depends on the camera. What is the difference? And since I have two meters here, an incident meter and a spot meter or reflectance meter. Reflectance meter means it is measuring the, co uh, the consubstantial light that is reflecting off of this wood or off of a person's face. In other words, it's measuring reflected light or light that is um, being emitted like off of a neon sign or stained glass window or the sun. So what is the difference if, since the spot meter on this is exactly the same thing as the spot meter on this, this is a general reflectance meter, whether it's matrix, center, or spot, and this is just a one degree spot, What's the difference between me taking a spot meter reading, which will turn out the wood will be exposed too dark. If I take a spot meter reading like this, say 640, 500, 800 of a second, depending on where I'm at on this uh, bright wood, then if I meter here, I'm at 320th of a second, 2.8. Now, if I switch my light meter over from reflected light to incident light, where I'm actually using this dome, what will be the difference? The answer is there won't be any difference. So if I actually have now switched over my incident meter reading, I'm actually measuring the incident light, which does not partake of anything. It doesn't matter whether I stick the card here or not. All it's doing is reading the incident light. If I point it without actually making a shadow. See, if I put my hand like this, I'm actually blocking the light. That's a part of learning how to use a light meter. I could pl place my hand like this and place the incident dome directly back into the camera that I'm shooting at, but I'm blocking the light. So that's why I need to place it like this. 320th of a second, exactly the same as if I turned on the spot meter and placed the gray card in front of the subject that I'm shooting. So at the very least, you know, as I've said, 95% of people don't need a light meter. At the very least, you should consider getting a gray card. Um, this is uh, like a digital color card. They wear out too, and of course, you know, the oil in your hands and stuff will shift the colors. We're looking at 18% gray right here. This would be, uh, uh, as that you can see here, we've got the zone system actually spelled out on the card. Also 18% on the back. So you want to take a model shot underneath the tree, whatever. Now talking about, uh, you know, where exactly you want to place the card for metering, like you want to meter a highlight that's coming in off of a person's face. Generally, you stick the card underneath their chin. You take a meter reading, a spot meter reading from your camera. If you don't plan on ever purchasing a light meter, I already said 95% of people don't need a light meter. Incredibly useful. You want to cinch up all the details to the right of your histogram. And by the way, I'll make another video right after this about there's an extremely long list, and people think, well, if I've got this extra device, this makes taking photography more difficult. And there are a thousand situations, literally, where you cannot get there from here. I mean, as far as averaging, uh, you know, your uh, your ambient light versus your uh, fill flashlight, your camera can't do any of that crap. Your camera is useless as uh, nipples on the Pope when it comes to being able to use it for flash photography. Useless is an old saying in the South called useless as tits on a bull. Useless. This is what a light meter is for, but a light meter is also extremely useful for incident light. Once you know how to use a light meter, and it's not that complicated, and it is a scientific instrument, this is designed so that you can concentrate on the composition instead of worrying about your stupid light meter in your camera, which is a useless POS. So, as we've learned, now let's take up my camera since I've got it at uh, ISO 1600, as I said, with aperture priority of 2.8. That's the depth of field that I want. If I take a shot here, okay, I'm, matrix. I'm in the matrix metering mode. If I actually put it on spot, 
and I do exactly what the one degree spot meter says, exactly the same thing, except the spot is a little bit wider. I'm at 640th of a second. Too damn dark. Your camera doesn't know. Well, I talk all the time in many videos about spot metering, and that's true, but you have to know what the level, what the grade is of what it is you're metering for, because I can spot meter this, like, well, this is my subject, it's kind of turning out to be 18% gray, but that's not different than me stepping out into, you know, a snowy front yard and spot metering anything. My camera is going to, whether it's spot metering, center metering, or matrix metering, my camera wants to turn all that white fluffy snow into this gray uh, uh, baby diaper sludge, 18% reflectance, or zone 5. Learning the actual zone system is incredibly important. I had to do it over and over again. It was the source of endless subjects back in photography school. Here's an interesting book I found in my basement. It's called The Zone System by Brian Love. It goes over the zone system. You usually find this book used for three bucks or, you know, download some book on the zone system. At least learn what the zones are. From pure white to pure black, 18% reflectance. Every camera out there, modern DSLR, is designed, and every camera is a reflectance system, okay? There's no incident meter inside your camera, which, which is what, <laughs> is one reason among many hundreds why the, a light meter is so incredibly useful. People think that it actually complicates photography. It does just the damn opposite. It makes it easier, so you can concentrate on the damn shot instead of, you know, trying to fight with your camera. Your camera tells you one thing. Screw the camera. The camera light meter and the most expensive camera in the world, all of them, is a POS, flat out. So as we showed you, I took a meter reading with the camera off this piece of wood. Since it is about a zone seven, seven and a half, it wants to darken that by stop, stop and a half, right? It turns out too dark. Well, I can adjust that in Lightroom. You certainly can. But that's a problem for two reasons. A, it pisses away your time, and B, when it underexposes, then you're losing your details, 70% or more of which exists up in the brighter zones. Okay? Up here in the brighter areas of your composition, depending on what the composition is, is where most of your details are. And if you underexpose, then you've lost it. As bad as it is to uh, blow your highlights and ruin the shot, it is also bad in its own many uh, faceted unique way to lose details that were never captured to begin with because you underexposed and you listen to the damn reflectance meter in your camera that sees everything as this, wants to turn everything into this. This is why, see, the key thing that people don't understand about a light meter, the main key thing is that this little white dome up here, this incident meter, it doesn't give a damn of the color, or the brightness, the reflectivity of the object that is you're shooting because it is not pointed at that. It is pointed back at the camera. This piece of wood could be pitch black, it could be snow white, it doesn't give a damn. All it does is measures the incident light and it will give you the... If I change this wood from pure white to pure black, it doesn't matter. The incident light reading remains the same and therefore your exposure is correct. Now, of course, the compositional value of what you want to expose for is also a determinant factor. If you want to make something really dark for compositional artistic choices, obviously so. You take your light meter and you work with it. You're able to calculate percentages and you're able to... And like I said, your camera is absolutely worthless when it comes to flash photography, much less multiple flashes. And that's where a light meter just dances on top of the skull of every camera out there because they are totally worthless for flash photography, most especially multiple flashes, which is the case for studio work. This is an absolutely nice. I don't care what anybody tells you. If they tell you that this is not a necessary tool for studio work with multiple speed lights or studio strobes, then they're an idiot. They like stabbing in the dark because they're a moron. You know, it does not take learn long to learn how to use a light meter. It does take a while to learn how to use one perfectly and correctly, but anyway, I'll get into that in another video. The point was is to make a uh, you know, a demonstration of 18% reflectance and what the hell your camera sees, what reflectance is versus what incidence is. The light actually falling on the subject and coming back to your camera or to the light meter, either through the reflectance meter in your camera or the spot meter in the light meter versus the incident light, which does not have anything to do with whatever color or luminance is that it is you're shooting. It is only measuring the incoming light, whether that is ambient light or a flashlight, speed light, studio strobe, or a combination of both. It measures both at the same time. That's why it's incredibly useful. It only measures that. 
to give you the correct exposure because reflectance is a trick. Reflectance is not going to tell your camera how to correctly expose. If you know how to use reflectance properly with a spot meter either in the camera or with a light meter, that's a good thing, but most people don't. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out the next video on light meter. Okay, bye.